All right, KMR, we've got some housings to check out. We're all about the rotary. We're all about the BRAP. That's why you're here. So we're going to talk a little bit about side housings, side plates, and resurfacing. It's always a good topic. So these are FD3S side plates. They're used. They've been rebuilt multiple times. Uh, this is not just the first rebuild. At this point, you know, you think about how old these parts are. They're at least 20 years old. Um, in this particular case, they came in because of this water corrosion right here, and this type of water corrosion is due to water sitting or moisture sitting when the car is not running, um, most likely also after the car has been parked uh, for some unknown reason. Um, this type of corrosion can cause accelerated wear both to the side plate, side housing itself, and the new components going in. So to protect your investment, it's best not just to throw these components back together again for another rebuild. Um, they have a couple thousandths of wear at this point, uh, so your new parts would wear into this pattern versus creating their own pattern anyways. They've never been resurfaced before, so there is a few thousandths of material there that we can remove safely and not heavily affect the nitriding, because we do want to make sure that we keep these housings in the best condition possible, and we always cut the least amount possible. Other things to be concerned about when you've got a motor that maybe has multiple rebuilds on it are your water seal and cooling jacket areas. This can start to have corrosion, pockmarks, and you can also start to have warpage in the plates. You can see how much heat and discoloration has happened over here. There's a good chance that this area is a little bit low. And by resurfacing, reflattening everything, that'll make sure it has the best possible chance at proper coolant sealing in all of the cooling jackets, longest runnable lifespan, and again, we're cutting off the most minimal amount, so proper rebuild should last just as good as new components. These side plates are starting to get pretty expensive um, and sometimes aren't available, so the ability to reuse, refurbish, um, you know, keep especially performance builds that maybe have modifications like studding, doweling, porting done, keep costs down and keep rebuilds up and running and reliable. So we're going to throw these on the lapping table. We'll take a look at them in a day or so and see how they're going. But we're going to flatten these back out, make them look as good as we can, almost like new. And here you can see some of that wear and corrosion fully exposed after a light hit on the lapping table. Um, some of that wear is really deep, and some of that corrosion could have really led to uh, premature failure or definitely a lack of metal-to-metal -metal contact in that water jacket and uh, main water seal area. So I think these were perfect candidates for lapping and bringing a set of housings uh, back to proper spec. And now we're back, magic of the internet, fully lapped set of housings. So there ended up being more wear and more corrosion than we originally thought. Uh, I had to cut off slightly more material, but still very well within the allowable specs from the Mazda OEM books. And uh, resurfacing housings, I always remind people, is a recommended service from Mazda. They know they've nitrided them. We just need to not cut off too much. And I think a lot of the issues that come from uh, resurfacing, at least the worries about it, are not the resurfacing process themselves or the housing themselves, but it's actually the cleaning process and preparation process when the engine's going together. So cleaning, extremely important, and the actual face should be hand polished. Basically with a uh, 800 grit or 1000 grit wet dry sandpaper, you want to buff out the surface. So it starts to get that mirror finish, just like an OEM housing. And that's pretty normal to any of the different types of resurfacing processes. But the whole reason we did this was to eliminate possible water seal failure, get our housings back to flat so all of our seals have the ability if you're using new seals to break in properly and that's going to increase reliability and overall lifespan because you're starting with a nice fresh flat surface. I think a lot of people do worry about the nitriding but um, we've never seen any issues through Mazda tricks and we also only cut off the minimal amount and uh, that's why we still have some discoloration right here. Um, it didn't seem like it was worth removing more material 
when all we're doing at that point right there is trying to remove the discoloration. It's actually already back to flat. It's nice hard material, so it's a good sealing area at that point. The water seals themselves will be able to seal properly, and you're going to get a good metal-to-metal -metal surface in that area um, contact, which also is part of the block's sealing. It's not just your water O-rings. This whole area is a metal-to-metal -metal seal against the rotor housing, and that's part of what maintains uh, longevity, reliability, and proper cooling system sealing. Uh, you know, if you've got corrosion, imperfections, or like I talked about, if there's any... Uh, warping from potentially overheating in the life of the motor, then that can start to deteriorate the motor's ability to seal properly. Even if it's rebuilt, um, if you've got those variations, you're not rebuilding two OEM specs. OEM specs would say it should be flat and new rotor housings, or at least rotor housings that are within those OEM specs. And uh, basically, you don't want anything outside of three thousandths of an inch. So if you're talking about having your side plates a little shrink and then your rotor housing a little shrink, that can equate to a three thousandths of an inch gap, and that can cause premature water seal fa failure. You're not getting the proper metal-to-metal -metal contact. Um, not only were we dealing with the water seal area in this particular block, we had a lot of typical wear from seals, so now we're able to get everything to break back in properly. All those new seals will bed in, better lifespan. And we had a center plate that had water corrosion, um, pitting, that's often from um, either condensation sitting in the block or even water from a water seal failure. So it brings up a lot of questions about this block. How did that that uh, water corrosion get there? Did the block have a failure? Was it due to sitting outside with condensation? You just don't know. So again, a great reason to actually resurface this block if you don't know its history. And we were able to remove all of that corrosion. Came out really nice, really flat. You've now got a good run surface that the seal isn't going to be running over a more porous area um, that could cause increased wear. And I think that's something a lot of people don't think about is if you have one area that starts to wear more aggressively than other areas, the whole plate can end up with an increased wear pattern. And then it's even harder to resurface if you start to dig into the plate prematurely. Maybe the motor's still running, it's got respectable compression, but you could have more internal damage happening. Um, because we ignore um, sometimes maintenance items. So I'm always pro-lapping. I don't recommend lapping things that don't need to be lapped. Um, you know, there's a lot of times where you don't need to lap it. A lot of motors don't need lapping. Um, but then in, in a lot of cases, motors do need lapping. High wear, um, potential warpage water seal failure, and corrosion to water seals. This was a perfect candidate to resurface, to lap with proper cleaning, polishing out the running surface, this motor can run just like an OEM motor all over again and probably be rebuilt multiple times and have a continued life cycle as if these housings um, were almost new again. Obviously, they're not new. They're resurfaced. We cut some material off, but that's the whole point, a second life for this set of housings. If anybody has questions, definitely drop the comments below. Um, you know, lapping is a, is a popular topic. I think we should cover pr proper cleaning. Um, it's really important to clean all your oil passages, the running surface itself. You basically want a sterile, clean, wipe it down with a glove and nothing comes off, which these are not, these are still dirty, um, housing before you assemble. And uh, maybe we'll do a video specifically dedicated to cleaning and preparation of used components and lapped components. All right, I think that's a brap. He's got to go. They're going to go brap again. they got to ship. People are waiting. i got to get back to work. Thanks for watching KMR.